What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to initialize your React project and actually get to where you can start coding with it. And I actually did this exact same thing in the last video except it's like a 40 minute long video because it's for another project. So this is just going to be a cut and dry, short, show you how to do the initialize part of this and do your own project rather than, you know, all the extra stuff I had in the last video. So here we are, let's get started. First thing we're going to do is make a new folder. And you can call this whatever you want. It's just going to be where your project is stored. React tutorial. And then two. That's what I'm going to call it. You don't actually make anything in here, though. What you're going to do is you're going to use VS Code or Git Bash or whatever terminal you're deciding to use. I'm going to use the VS Code one because that's the most convenient one. VS Code is free, by the way. I'll leave a link to it in the description if you want to use it. Um, and yeah, so you're just going to leave that for now. And now go over to your folders. And you want to go into that folder now. You want to open up React Tutorial 2. And once it's open, you can now create new terminal here up at the top. Or you can press Control, uh, Control Shift Plus or whatever. Control shift. I never use that for some reason. And now we're going to type npx create dash react dash app. And then you're going to name your app. So we're just going to name it react tutorial 2. And now this is going to take a little bit. It's going to take probably about a minute or two. But once it's done, you're going to see a lot of files and folders over here that you're not going to really, you know, you're going to think it's complex. But you don't have to pay attention to most of that. In fact, I'm going to delete like 75% of the files. Because you don't even need them. They're just boilerplate stuff to make you, make the initial page look good. And you don't actually need any of that. So we're just going to wait for this to get done. And then we can get into the deleting the files. And showing you exactly what all you need and what you don't need. One thing, I, I am not going to explain anything about actual React here. I'm not going to show you how components work or how any of the code is written. I'm just showing you how to initialize, initialize React here. So if you're looking for any coding tutorials and you already know how to do this, this isn't the video for you. Alright, so now it's done. We have this new folder inside of that fol folder, and this is our actual project folder. So what we're going to need to do if we want to use the terminal any further is, as you can see, this is only in the first. Uh, our directory is only set to the first folder. So to get into this folder now on, on VS Code, we're going to type cd um, react tutorial 2. And now we are in the new folder. As you can see, I named both the folders the same, which probably isn't the best thing to do, but it works. So now we are in this folder, and we can just go in VS Code here and open up that folder so that we don't have both folders open. You don't have to do that, but that's what I like to do because I'm kind of OCD about that. So now we are in the correct directory, and we can start deleting some of these files. This node module folder here, you don't even need to touch this, as you can see. It's just a freaking bunch of dependencies that you don't actually need to do anything with. But that's all the dependencies of React. And yeah, that's basically React's program is that. That's what you're looking at uh, when you open node modules. So in public, we have the favicon, which is the little uh, icon up at the top of your tab. So we can delete that. And you can replace that with a new one if you want. Uh, this is just the logo. This is what's spinning around on the screen whenever you um, whenever you launch the development server. Manifest. We don't need that. We don't need robots. And we don't need the readme. Or you could just change it to your own readme if you wanted. Um, we don't need app.css. As you can see, just boilerplate code. So we're just going to delete that. 
I'm going to delete app.test. I'm going to delete index.css. We're going to delete logo. Setup test. And report web vitals. And now this is all we need now. So as you can see, all we have left um, as far as the app goes is index HTML app.js and index.js uh, git ignore is for github package lock and package are for react dependencies or not dependencies but uh whatever you want to call them plugins libraries anything that you install is going to be here so these are all the default ones and this basically what this does is it tells your uh it tells your react or vs code what to install whenever you send this file you wouldn't send the node modules file as you can see in git ignore it's going to be ignoring node modules so if you push to github this node mo this node modules folder will be left out since it's so big and just standard react stuff it's not your actual code so basically what this package lock and package does is tell anyone who downloads the github code um, what dependencies to download and so when you do npm install it will look into these package lock files and it will download all um, the dependencies that are needed so that's why these exist anyway don't need to touch these unless you have some manual stuff that you want to do for some reason but on on the 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 big picture is don't touch these in general now index.js this is just going to be your actual top of the hierarchy this is going to be the last component that all of your other components go through in order to get rendered um, because in, as you can see in here this is going to be the root so this is the root div now I know I said I wouldn't teach you any of the coding but I am going to teach you um, how react works a little bit not necessarily how to code in it but I am going to teach you um, what it's actually for what it's doing so in regular JavaScript we would target this with an event listener and then target this div um, with like inner HTML or create element uh, or append child things like that uh, to put things inside of here so let's say we wanted another div in here we could nest that using create element we could create element div and do that so that's exactly what react is doing um, in the back end for you so this is why Re react exists because you don't want to type like let's first of all you got to make the variable so you'd be typing const um, const div equals document get not create element get element so that's what you'd have to type just for the variable that's all that's doing is that is well not div const root so that's that's our root right we'd have to do this in regular JavaScript make that variable just just to signify what this even is and that's already a pain in the ass but that's not even a little bit done now what we have to do is we have to make another variable and that's well actually we don't have to make a variable I lied <laughs> what we have to do is we have to go root um, dot append child actually create element sorry haven't done this in a minute we create a div and we can make this const new div so you can see this is just very annoying and then we can do um, new div dot append child uh, p you know just whatever it is and then uh, const um, p equals that and then guess what we're doing even more we're going to go const and we're making a text element so text equals p dot um, create text node hello world so that's all that we've done just to get hello world on the screen. That's all, all, all this.
four freaking variables. And then we have to call those. Um, you know, we have to do something with those. So we'd usually have a function. But that's all the work you'd have to do just to get something in here, just some text with a paragraph element. So this is exactly how it works. Um, you'd essentially be doing that just by typing. You don't have to type any JavaScript to make it do that. It's just doing that for you, and you can make logic that says this doesn't show up when some sort of condition is true, and this happens if it's false. So like, for example, see this app? That means that this code right here is going to be displayed instead of this. So I could be like, um, you know, I could say, uh, I'm just going to true this out. We'll just say true. And this is a ternary operator, so it'll be a question mark. So true. We want to say um, app. So this, this will always be true, obviously, because I just put true. Um, but let's pretend for a second that it's not always true. If this was false, then it will do this next thing I'm about to put after the semicolon. Then we'll display hello world or, or like, you know, please log in. So you could have a variable for your auth for your authentication from your database, um, signifying whether the user is logged in or not. And if they're not logged in, it'll say, please log in. You could even have like a button or something like that. And yeah. And if they are logged in, it will just show them the app. So that's an example of what you could do there. Very easy. As you can see, that's literally like no code at all. I mean, it's just very simple logic um, without having to do all that extra stuff. So I'm sure you can see how convenient React makes it. So I'm just going to leave it like that. We'll probably get started with this uh, exact same file in the next video. I'm going to do some sort of React tutorial. I'm not sure exactly what yet. But anyway, that's how you initialize a React project and a little bit about how it works. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you got anything helpful out of this video, definitely let me know. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.